What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another episode of In Totality. I am your host, Megan Ashley, and I am just so grateful and thankful that you are back joining me another week with another episode. And guess what? I have another amazing guest, and I'm so grateful that she's here. Haley Ma- <laughs> I was so ready. You were so close. And you know what I was about to say? Haley Matilda. Matilda, chow. <laughs> Matilda. That's a new one. I'm going to add that. I'm going to add that. Matilda. Haley Madeline. Madeline. Haley. And the crazy thing is, I even you took my. You just my, told me Melinda. how to say Melinda. Melinda. Why was I saying Madeline? Help me, Lord. She's my friend, and I love her, even though I, I don't always know how to say her last name. <laughs> but Haley is here all the way from London, yes. and I'm so excited that you're here. Yes. Thank you. I'm excited that I'm here as well. It's crazy. I was not meant to be in Atlanta right now. I know. Well, yeah. We're it on was this the last podcast. Minute, right. It yeah. was so last minute, and it's just like God, the obedience of God, like just obeying that voice. Yeah. I heard God say, you need to go to ATL. Like, you've you got to train in there. There's things to do. Um, literally as I landed it's just been back to back and even when I flew out my, I got great I got upgraded my 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 ticket got upgraded. I saw that and I was just like okay cool god like I, I see what you're doing yeah and it's just the little things that god does that just reminds you he's in it yeah and I'm like yeah bet I love that yeah 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 so tell so tell everyone who you are first and then we yes. can tell them how we met yes Two years ago. In London. Um, in London. <laughs> um, but yeah, just tell us a little bit about you. You're from London, yes. but tell us about your background. Okay, cool. So my name is Haley Melinda Record. Um, <laughs> so Record is obviously my marital name. Melinda's my maiden name, but I use all three. Um, so I'm a public speaker. So I've been doing speaking now for 10 years. I started at the age of 16. And since then, I've been able to do talks across USA, UK, Europe, Dubai, um, Africa as well. Worked with different corporations from Google, JP Morgan, to um, Wagamama, to Perfume Shop, to wow. IBM, to just great doors, Google. Google. There's so many different doors that God has opened up for me. Um, and I remember when I first started speaking, I started speaking to a room of 12 people. Mm. And you know where the Bible comes and says, decree a thing. And still, even when I was 16, I was not saved. I didn't know Jesus, but I still believed in the principle of the things that what you say happens. Mm -hmm. So even when I was speaking to a room of 12 people, I used to go back home and say, God, I know I'm called to speak to thousands. Mm. God, I know the door's gonna open for me globally, um, but I'm very big on stewardship. Mm -hmm. um, before God could open global doors, I heard God say, what are you doing with my local doors? Mm. How are you stewarding London? Wow. How are you stewarding the nation that I've planted you in? Wow. And I think that a lot of the times people are praying for prayers, but we're not opening to stewarding what God has put Already in our hands, hands. Yeah. right? Yeah. So 16, 17, 18, um, I'm literally going up and down London, going across all the universities. I've spoken probably across 25 universities across the UK. Wow. Um, done a whole tour, going to different universities, speaking, um, and then the international door opened up. And it's funny because the first international door that opened up for me was Canada. Um, mm. And I remember when, you know, I'm like, I'm going to Canada. And literally two days before I met to fly out, God says, you're not going. I'm shutting the door. I'm like, God, but you opened this door. <laughs> and I remember just hearing God say, you made speaking an idol, so you can't go. And sometimes we can put the gift oh, above the giver. Oh my goodness. Yeah. God said, you need to lay that on the no, altar. No, say that again. You, you can sometimes put the gift above the giver. And that's what happened to me. I mm. became so caught up in speaking as making it my God. Um, and I started to believe that speaking was opening the doors for me and not God anymore. Ooh. <laughs> so there's certain rooms I'm stepping Haley into. said, hi, I'm here and we're getting into it. <laughs> we, we don't got time it. to play. <laughs> this is what it is. I know that. She said, forget all the icebreakers and the pleasantries. <laughs> the word of the Lord. You are making idols. No, you too. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Wait, Haley. Lord, that is good. You already you know been, we're deep. You, you, you put the gift over the giver. Yes. And the only reason why I know, like the only reason why that hits me so hard is because I came to the realization that the things that God gave me, I made idols of them. And mm. I, cause I know he gave me a gift to serve mm. and I made an idol out of mm. it. And I remember last year when we were in ATL, we were having our conversation and we were talking about 
the 180 gospel rather yes. than the 360 gospel. Yes. And I remember literally going back and thinking, damn, let me never be so caught up with, I guess, what God has given me that I forget the power of repentance. Yeah. And I remember when I heard that word, that was the first time when God came and said, yep, speaking's an idol and I had to repent. I had to repent. I had to go and be like, wow, God, I actually, I actually understand why you had to shut that door. So I remember the door of Canada shuts um, and another speaking engagement pops up in Norway and the door opens up um, for Norway. And I go back to God. I'm like, God, Norway though, <laughs> Norway. It's like, it's like another state in the U S inviting you to speak rather than another country. That's yeah. how I looked at it. So okay. I was like, please God, like Canada, Norway, yeah. <laughs> come on. Um, and in Canada, I was going to get paid. Mm -hmm. Canada, they're going to fly out me and somebody else. Mm -hmm. They were going to put me in a five-star hotel. Mm -hmm. I was going to meet some MPs from Canada. Like that, it was a big door that opened. Yeah. God said, go to Norway. And it was just that reminder of those who are diligent yeah. shall stand before kings and not mere men. Yeah. But then as another scripture that says, you know, those who are faithful with few shall yes. be ruler over many. Yes. Um, and I kept meditating on that scripture. Those who are faithful over few should be ruler over many. It's okay, God, I'm going to be faithful with Norway. And I remember when I got there to Norway, um, I'm praying and God specifically tells me to speak to one person. Mm. Specifically, he, told, he literally says, you need to read up on this one person. So I'm researching this one person who was another speaker as well. Mm. And literally as I finish speaking, that's the person who I bump into. And as I bump into them, they're kind of like, I'm the CVP of Microsoft. I'm so touched by your talk. I want to fly you out to come and train my whole team out in Redmond, Washington. And that was basically the door, the biggest, one of the biggest doors that got opened up wow. for me. And literally that was when wow. it changed, it literally changed my speaking career. Wow. And, you know, yeah, ended up training the senior um, leaders of, of Microsoft um, as, off the back of Norway. And that came, that came off me being obedient to God about when he Canada. Said no. When he said no. When he, he said no about Canada and I listened. And then, and, and I know that if God, I know that if I didn't, if I went to Canada, I know Norway wouldn't have happened. Because right. at the time that right. I got that message for Norway, I was meant to be on the plane. The timing of it. I was actually meant to be on the plane. So I would have missed it. I would have missed that message. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that that's such a big point. Like, what will you say when you've prayed for something mm -hmm. and God opens the door, but then he decides to close it. What is your response to that? And I think the, the mere fact that you were obedient when he said, no, I'm shutting that door right now because I'm not shutting this door to punish you. I'm shutting this door to develop your character because mm -hmm. you've made an idol out of something that I've given you. Yes. Right. So I'm helping you with your character right yes. now. So do we trust him enough that when he says no, that it's still for our good? Listen, it's, it's deep. I think a lot of the times when we're praying, we're praying to enter into the room, but God is so faithful that he wants you to stay in that room. Mm. God wants to stay, wants you to stay in that room. Jesus came and he preached for three years and 2000 years later, he's still the most popular name on earth. <laughs> Jesus didn't just enter into the room. He stayed there. <laughs> 2000 years later, he's still in the room. Still. Still. And that's Very three notable. years. <laughs> and that's three years of him preaching. He started at 30. Lord 33. Jesus. Yeah. And some of us are, 10 years in a game. And the question is, will your name still ring bells 2000 years later? Lord Jesus. Because you, you haven't learned to do it the way Jesus did it. And yeah. even he taught us the model of obedience. Yeah. And the way my, some people look at my career, they're like, you're 26. How have you worked with the biggest firms? How have you flown all over the world? How have you been paid big money to do whatever, whatever? Can I just pause? She's 26. I just, <laughs> 26. Just that's it. That's important key. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Um, and it's literally been obedient. Yeah. And I got saved at a speaking engagement. Really? Yes. That's how, that's the first time I ever encountered the spirit of God. Wow. It was at a speaking engagement. I had wow. been booked to speak. I hated church. I hated Christianity. My mom was a Christian, but I just believed that Christianity was a fluke. Wow. So whenever I used to go to church and I used to see people praying, people falling under the spirit, people crying, I'd be like, why are these people acting? Like, wow. God is not here. God is not in the room. Um, and I remember I got booked for a talk and they were like, Hayley, you're speaking, um, you know, you're a speaker. Da, da, da. Can you come and speak at our youth event? And I said, yeah, sure. Cool. Um, cover my travel, whatever. And then I go and the first thing I see is a cross. Mm. I literally am about to do a one at turn and mm. get out of there. Cause I was against church mm. and I was with my best friend and she grabs me. She says, you can't go mm. because you've led, you've already entered into the room. You mm. have a name. 
how does it feel or how would it sound that yeah, you come look, here and then yeah. you just leave? It's yeah. just going to look bad. So that just said, just do it. And, and I'll pause it here because funny enough, that morning was probably the first time I'd actually prayed in a long time. And I asked Jesus to show me who he was that very morning. Because prior to this, I used to be in new age. Mm. So in terms of meditation, I used to meditate for 10 hours a day. Um, opening no. my chakras. Yeah, I used to meditate 10 hours a day, opening my chakras, astral projection. No. Crystal. Yeah, that's my background. That's what I used Haley. to be. Haley. Yeah. I did not know that. <laughs> I don't know if I did know. I did not know that. That was my background. Why? I just, I, I'm not saying that in the like, oh my God, how could you? I'm saying that in, oh my God, for you to do that and believe how yeah. you believe now is just yeah. incredible. Okay, keep going. Because it's, uh, you know, Jesus is everything. Ugh. He's so real. And that was, for me, it was, I was so desperate for peace. Because at the age of 18, I tried to commit suicide. Wow. Because I was so, I, I literally got to a point when I was so broken, just gone through a heartbreak, so broken. I'm young. I felt like the pressures are everything. Um, being a high achiever, I felt like certain things were just going wrong. I was so, I was so hard on myself. A lot of rejection. My dad died when I was a kid. There was just oh. so many different things that I had built trauma and I never processed it. So it got to the point when I'm 18 now and I'm kind of like, I want to take my own life. And even in that time when we wanted to take my own life, it was like something just couldn't, it was not successful because I tried to overdose multiple mm -hmm. times. It just was not successful. Mm -hmm. um, and at different points, people would just be like, God wants you here. And I'd be like, well, if God wants me here, why am I in so much pain? Mm -hmm. And that's when I ended up going into spirituality because mm -hmm. I was just kind of like, okay, maybe God doesn't love me, but the universe does. So I would start to now just be like, well, the universe loves me. The universe, I, I was that I was that person, wow. like anyone that would open up to me, I'd be like, well, the universe is going to open up a door for you. I was the universe girl. Wow. That was me. Wow. I so was, when you were doing that, when you were into new age and opening up your shop, because I went through that phase. Yes. And <laughs> I was, you. when I say I was buying every rock, right. looking for peace, right. looking for, yeah. I was buying every rock. I was doing tuning forks. Yeah. Ooh, I was, you was deep, deep. I was doing tuning forks. I was doing, I mean, and this was just like 2021. Oh, yeah, I've known God. This is recent. Oh yeah, I've known God. I've, I, I mean, I, I believed in Jesus. I grew up in church. I was just in so much pain. I'm yeah. like, this. I, I got to do so. Okay, but God made rocks, so right. this isn't bad. I never right. looked at it as a different yeah. religion. I'm thinking God made this. God made sound. Yeah. God made all these things, right? So this isn't bad. I'm not like worshiping these things, but that's a deception that the enemy tries to use. And like, it's not right. that bad, right? Did he really say it goes back to him in the in the garden? Yeah. Did, he, Did really he really say, say that? Did he mm. really say? Mm. And it was the same thing. It, it's not that bad. They're rocks. Like what's? But I'm I'm like charging my rocks on mm. full moons and in the in the sun and I got them lined up and I was doing sage and mm. I was taking sage around my house praying with sage <laughs> talking about in the name of Jesus with sage no way. <laughs> with sage right so I'm doing all these things really wanting to find peace and it's crazy because and, and you can tell me if you had this the same experience and then I want to know what got you out of that but I'd never had peace. Never. I never had peace. I like deep. Never. I never, never had, had peace. It. All never the meditation, it. all the, I, I never had peace. I never had peace. How deep can I go on this podcast? Girl, go. I remember I was astral projecting. Now when you astral project, it's when you cause your spirit, your soul to come and project out of your body. And I remember I came out of my body and I'm seeing figures in my room, dark figures, dark figures. And literally as I'm seeing these figures, I hear a thunder. I'm talking about a thunder that is, it will ripple your soul, mm. earthquake, a tsunami. I've never been in any of these natural disasters, <laughs> but whatever that thunder was, it shook me to the core. Mm. I went straight back into my body and I heard an audible voice say, never do that again. No. I did not sleep that whole night. I run into my mom's room the next morning. I said, mom, did you hear about that storm? She was like, there was no storm. It was clear the whole day, <clears throat> the whole night. No. That's when I knew that I had encountered something mm. that I should have not done. And I felt like that was the mercy of God. Oh. That was the mercy of God. For sure. That was the mercy of God. And that was when I started now questioning who's Jesus. Mm. That's when I started getting curious. How, what age was that? No, 18. Okay. So this is just before I came to Christ. Wow. And that's when I started asking Jesus, like, who are you? So you were meditating, doing all this new age stuff, 
and still depressed, like depressed, yes. wanting to commit still suicide, still trying to commit suicide, failing right. at those attempts. Right. Wow. Yes. And so now that morning, 29th of July, 2016, I'll never forget it. Um, I now pray and I'm like, Jesus, who are you? Mm -hmm. So I go in to the room. As I just came and said, my best friend grabs me as I'm about to leave. She says, you can't leave. Mm. And as I'm literally speaking, um, as I'm literally speaking, um, I literally feel like something grabs my tongue. That's the best way I can say it. And now the trajectory of my message changes. Now, as I said, I've been speaking from the age of 16. I'm 18, so I'm two years in. I've never spoken about God on stage before. Mm. And now I start speaking about God and I'll never forget this message. And I start speaking about God and I start saying, guys, some of us, you know, we'll never leave our phone. We'll never leave our house with our phone dead. We always charge our phone. But how many of us are willing to charge our spirits before we leave? Do you charge your spirit with prayer? Okay, you guys, before we continue on with this episode, have you ever been on a hunt for a new doctor and you ask everyone, so I totally know what this feels like. You ask everybody who you know for a doctor that listens to you, knows what you need, makes you feel comfortable. After weeks of searching and asking everyone around town, you finally find the one. It's close to the kid's school, it's close to your house. It's amazing, it checks all the boxes. So then you call the office, you make an appointment, and they actually have an available appointment. Everything is working out just right. But then the receptionist tells you that the perfect doctor that you've been waiting for and you searched all over for doesn't take your insurance. I'm telling you right now. Wipe the tears, put away the ice cream, and head over to ZocDoc.com to find and book a doctor who is right for you and takes your insurance. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top rated patient review doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for ones that take your insurance, that are located near you, and treat almost every and any condition you're searching for. These doctors have verified reviews from actual real patients, not robots. The typical wait time to see a doctor booked on ZocDoc.com is between 24 and 72 hours. That's it. You can even score same day appointments. You can find the doctor you want and book them immediately with just a few app taps. ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. Go to ZocDoc.com totality and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's ZocDoc.com slash totality. ZocDoc.com slash totality. All right, guys, back to the show. That was my message. Do you charge your spirit with prayer before you leave your house? That came out of your mouth that came out after my mouth. rejecting God, <laughs> right, right. astral projecting, new age, right. universe, meditation, chakras, right. all that. That's what came out. That is what came out of my mouth. And what happens now is as I'm as I'm as I'm as I'm saying this, I'm confused because I can't, it's as if I can't control my tongue anymore. I was so confused. And literally, as I go down... Do you feel like you were having a war with I felt you? like... I, yeah, I felt like there was a war inside of me. Mm -hmm. When the Bible comes, says that flesh is spirit. spirit. Yeah. I felt like the spirit man in me arose. Mm -hmm. And my flesh was just at this point, I just couldn't. I could, yeah. I couldn't. And I now get off the stage. I get off the stage. And obviously, my best friend's looking at me thinking, what the flip was that? Because she knew what my message was. Yeah. I, I, it wasn't the message. About God. Right. Yeah. So I'm looking at it thinking, sis, I don't know what the hell happened. <laughs> um, and what happens is somebody comes on stage right after me and says, there's somebody who got down on their knees today. I don't know what you've been going through, but you asked Jesus to show you who you are, to show, to show himself to you. And I literally heard Jesus whisper in my ear saying, you're in this room. If that's you, come to the front. After I just said that prayer that morning. I ran so quick to the altar. I just knew that was God. I knew that was God. I ran so quick to the altar. And as soon as I get to the altar, I am bawling. I'm talking, I'm feeling the tangible presence Ooh, of God. We. Now I'm feeling that peace that Jesus. I've been so meditating for so many hours. I'd felt it. Jesus. I encountered it. Wow. And I've never looked like I've never looked back. Wow. I've never looked back. Wow. And that all happened at a speaking engagement. Wow. Yeah. And that just changed everything. Changed everything. It changed the way I do business. It changed the way I built my brand. It changed the way I love on people. It changes the way I speak to people, but ultimately how I hear from God. Yeah. Because I'm very big on the, I'm, the Bible comes and says, my sheep shall hear my voice. Yeah. I feel that we are living in a church that does not, we're living in an age where the church doesn't hear God anymore. Oof. 
we're living in an age where people feel Christianity is without Christ. Mm. You can't have Christianity without the voice of Christ. Mm. Jesus speaks yeah. till this day. Yes. Every day. Yes. It's kind of the, the best way I can say it is it's kind of like if someone's playing a piano or someone's playing a uh, piano um, and it's not connected to electricity, mm -hmm. people would be like, oh, it's not playing. It's because it's not connected to the source. Mm -mm. It's not connected to the source. It's still playing. God is always speaking. It's whether you're connected to connected. the source. Yeah. So are you feeling in the UK and in, in across the sea right what is happening to christianity there are you experiencing the same things we're experiencing here mm. in the sense of this watering down yes it's more about self right it's more about you know everyone is into my boundaries yeah. my myself <laughs> yes, yes my peace my this my that me 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 yes um and it's not so much about god yes and and then there's also this level of compromising yes this level of looking and wanting to be the world to attract the world when we're called to be set apart from the world. So yeah. is the, are you seeing this yes. over I feel, there? I feel the UK is still the West. Mm. Still the West. The Western world, unfortunately, is always going to be caught up on the things that don't matter. Mm. Um, so I think the UK right now is just very, it's very interesting. It's very passive. Um, it's one of those things where the name of Jesus, you can't say the name of Jesus as boldly as you think you can. Wow. Um, you know, there's, there's been a time I've been on a big radio station, probably one of the big, I won't no, name it. One of the biggest radio stations in the UK. And I remember I've gone there for an interview and someone came and asked me like, Hey, how do you do all of this? I was like, well, I do this cause of my faith, you know, Jesus has been one of the main anchors of my faith. Now it was pre-recorded. And they I remember when out. I listened back, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I remember saying Not Jesus. They, edit it they out. edited it out. I'm on, and I'm one of wow. the one of the biggest radio stations in the UK. Wow. They edited it out. Wow. And I've had certain conversations. And it's interesting because, you know, when being a person of faith, people always ask me, how do you get into these rooms? And I'm very big on excellence. Mm -hmm. Just because I'm a person of faith, you're not going to doubt me when it comes to my excellence. You're not going to doubt me when it comes to my brand. You're not going to doubt me in terms of my speaking ability. You're not going to doubt me when it comes to my clients. You're not going to mm. doubt me when it comes to my resume. Yes, I'm a person of faith, but the Bible comes and says, those that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. The reason why I have an excellent black brand is because I love Jesus. Mm. <laughs> Ooh, Haley. It's because I love yeah, Jesus. Yeah. I do believe in the fact that yes, God qualifies the call, but I actually believe that God wants you qualified too. Right. He wants you qualified. Right. When you're coming to pitch yourself to a brand partnership, you're not going to just be like, hey, it's by faith. No, you've yeah. got to have the metrics. You've got to have the stats. Yeah. You've got to come and give the representation. You've got to give an example to say, hey, I have done X, Y, Z. Yeah. Can we work together and et cetera, yeah. et cetera. So I think when it comes to faith, I feel when it comes to, yeah, I think people focus a lot on competence rather than character mm. a lot. It's all about what are they doing? Who do they know? This, this, this. But yeah. I'm big on character. I'm big on character. Mm. I mean, we're seeing it right now. 2024 has already started with the craziest exposures. We are in a time of exposure. Um, and I'm happy we are. Why? Because in the book of Daniel, it says God ascends and descends the kings. Mm. We need to remember who sits on the throne. Okay. We need to remember who sits on the front. Yeah. We need to remember that God sees everything. everything. He sees the matter of people's hearts. You see people fly. Like, I'm not the type of person that I I watch people fly and I'm I'm happy. Yeah. I start praying for them. Yeah. I'm like, ooh, you yeah. thought you saw the devil down there? You're going to see the devil on the mountaintop. Ooh, we. You see the devil on the mountaintop? Yeah. That's why for me, the higher you go, the lower you have to go in, the, in, in your prayer closet. What? Yes. The higher you go, the yes. lower you bow. Yes. You can't stand before kings and you don't know how to bow before a great God. <sighs> That's the secret. Like people want the fame, but they don't want the private time with God. Yeah. They don't want a secret place. The yeah. secret place is the secret to glory. Yeah. His glory, yeah. most importantly. Yeah. But the platforms that you're praying for, it takes place in a secret place. Yeah. And it's developing that character, that that James moment where it says, when you go through trials and tribulations, in fact, rejoice. Yeah. Because that is what's going to make you look more like Christ. Yep. It develops that character. It develops, it develops it. perseverance. It develops more faith into him. Yes. It's when you just press through in the hardest of times. Mm. And it's so crazy because the more I talk to people, and I just love, you know, 
I'm so thankful that God has blessed me and, and, and given me the ability to have this platform because I really do love having conversations about God. Yes. I have them in my private life all the time. Um, and so I love hearing and what I have been hearing, the, the common theme has been these tragic things that have happened in people's lives mm. and how the more that they know God, they see it as a mercy. Hmm. It, they don't see it as this thing of like God is mad and and hates me or he allowed this to happen because he's angry at me, <clears throat> but they see it as like a mercy. Like I'm so thankful that you allowed me to experience that, even though it was painful. Yes, because of where it brought me to in my level of knowing him. Boy, the intimacy. The the intimacy, the I, intimacy oh that you build with God yes. when you are broken. It happens in your and, broken and, place. And the Bible says he's, he's near to the broken so hearted. Yes. So that's the perfect position for you to yes. be in. If you yes. feel broken, you are in the perfect position yes. to be near and close and intimate yes. to an amazing God, the yes. true and living God, the yes. one that can come in yes. and heal and restore. Come on. You have been doing crystals. I was doing crystal sage and all this new age stuff and didn't have peace. Right. But it wasn't until we got into a place of isolated wilderness time with God yes. and we sought him mm. and got to know him come intimately on. by reading his word, not just by sitting there being like, okay, like it was <laughs> reading his word yes. and with prayer, yes. with fasting. Yes. And in that it changed, like it changes everything, everything. inside of you. Everything. You don't respond. It builds your character. Everything. You want to have better character, get in your word. Come on. I'm big on that. And you, and I think you know that in the sense of, um, we're living just in a time where people are running away from the only thing that can save them. You know, when I think about an iPhone, if an iPhone breaks down, you're not going to take it to Samsung. Why? Because Samsung never manufactured the product. If something gets broken, you take it to the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. We are a broken society, but we're not going to a manufacturer. Yeah. We're not going to, to our the manufacturer. One make, yep. And the amazing thing is Steve Jobs passed away, right? So even though he created the iPhone, mm -hmm. he came and said, listen, I need to create something that will outlive me, which mm. is the manual, mm. right? So when people are kind of like, oh my gosh, I can't reach the manufacturer. Well, have you been in the manual? Okay. Have you been in the manual? Have you been in the word? Why is that? Why do you feel outside of the enemy and his, obviously devices, it's his yeah. devices, right? We know that it's him, but- for those who are wanting to pursue God, yeah, and there and we have so many leaders mm. in the church, yes, that aren't coming from. The, they just have their one little scripture to set up their. They're motivational. <laughs> yeah, as a speaker who's actually motivational, I'll, I'll listen to some sermons. I'll be like, I know where you got that from. That was in the Bible. <laughs> Is that not crazy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it's so it feels like there's so many people who are now pastors that really probably should be motivational speakers. No, and it's and it's true. I think for me, one of the things that I'm constantly learning is learning that everything comes from the word of God. You you if you go to Genesis, Genesis actually means genealogy. If you want to understand humans in terms of their DNA, you have to go to Genesis. Mm. And the Bible comes to say God created in the beginning, God created. Yeah. In the beginning, God creates. Yeah. When you put God in the beginning, he will create. Mm. When you allow him to be the first thing, he will create everything that needs to be created in your That's life. That's so good. That's Genesis 1. Put him in the beginning and God will create in your life. And I think the, the thing is, is that people are trying to put themselves in the beginning. Yeah. I, I did this. I done this. I've been in the book of Daniel. And ooh, the book of Daniel has reminded me God is on the throne. Mm. The fear of the Lord is something that God needs to hit the church like crazy. We need that fear back. We need the spirit. It's a spirit as well. Because in Isaiah, it actually says the spirit of the fear of God. Yeah. We need to pray for that spirit. Yeah. Constantly I'm praying, God, give me the spirit where I'm fearful of you again. Yeah. And fear does not mean, John Bevere says it well, fear does not mean to be scared, scared. of God. It's yeah. to be, you're scared to live a life without that, him. Yeah. And when I think about Daniel, it got to a place where King Nebuchadnezzar was walking down the, the kingdom and he was looking at the king, the kingdom. He said, look at what I built. And then the Bible comes to say, literally, as he was speaking, it says that God um, um, banished him from humanity because he started to believe that the kingdom was his when actually God created the kingdom. And that is the place where people are getting to. And yeah. I think that's why there's a lot of falling. Yeah. 
because people are getting to the top of their mountains, the top of politics, po top of celebrity, <laughs> yeah. top influencers, whatever they are. Mm -hmm. And they come to say, look at what I built. Mm. And as their God there, God is looking at them and saying, oh, really? <laughs> you think it's you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I'm going to show you yeah, who bet. God is. Yeah. Bet. Let me show you who yeah, God is. Because he won't be mocked. And his glory is always what he, like his glory, he will get his yeah. glory. The unfortunate thing is we're going to see the most exposures of pastors in 2024 and beyond. Jesus Lord. We're going to, we're going to. And, okay. So let me tell you something my mom said to me the other day. Right. She said, um, she said the reason, one of the reasons why we're seeing a lot of this is because she was like, Megan, never this is why the Bible says to live a, a life blameless. Mm. She said, because when you don't, when you try to hide your sins, yes. that you give the enemy license and permission to expose you. Ooh. But what can what can expose you if you have already exposed? Who can expose you if you've already exposed yourself? Yeah, so true. If I if I, if you can stand in front of your whoever. Your audience, your 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 whoever, your church, your whoever follows you, and you're not humble mm. and saying, I am a fleshly man. I'm mm. a fleshly person. Come on. It is nothing but the grace of God Come on. that allows me to stand here because without him, I am trash. I am mm. terrible without him. Mm. I have done things like I, I, I want to say for my audience, think of me and think of the worst. Mm. I need you to see me as a person mm. because I don't want to be anybody's God. Mm. You have to know that whatever this is has been submitted to him. This podcast, this Amazing. has been submitted to him. This Come ain't on. for me. Come on. This is for him. Come on. Do you know what I mean? I and you. I feel like we are. Like, that's why we're seeing the things that we're seeing. Yes. Whether it's true or false, whatever. We're, we're, some, we're seeing stuff. We're seeing and stuff. We're seeing stuff. But, you know, but what you said, to be blameless before the Lord, I think it's super important um, in this time that you have godly accountability. Yes. Like, get, get in the presence of those who inspire you in holiness. Yes. Not happiness, holiness. Because why isn't that preached anymore? Holiness? Holiness, because right? People, we're not preaching that. People want happiness over holiness. <sighs> Happiness feeds into self, holiness feeds into the Lord. And um, the greatest things are not just meant to make you happy, they're meant to make you holy. Mm. Um, I'm all I'm all about holy accountability, yeah. godly accountability. Yeah. The Bible comes and says in Galatians chapter six, verse one, if you see your brother and sister, and I make it very clear, brother and sister, meaning if the person does not know you, you have no business trying to correct them. Cause there's a lot of entitled people on the internet who will come in your comments and come and be like, well, this isn't godly. Are you my brother or sister? Mm. Do you have my number? Mm. And if you do, which number do you have? Because I have two phones. Mm. You're trying to correct me, but you, you're not. You even, don't know you, me. You don't, you don't know me. <laughs> when, and, and I want to be clear. Knowing somebody is having a consistent, current yes. relationship with them. Right, right, If right, you right. don't have a relationship with them. Now. Now. <laughs> now. You have no business having anything to say about somebody that you don't have a current Active because people, relationship people with. change. Because yeah. I think one of the things is, is that, listen, none of us are perfect. Yeah. None of us are perfect. I have people that probably have things to say about me from years ago. Yeah. Okay, you can say it. That's cool. I don't allow that to hold me captive now. Yes. Because yes. I believe that grace is meant to change you. Yeah. Um, You have to extend, if you believe you, you can change, you have to extend that same grace to somebody else. Yes. And I'm very big on the idea of letting people go in previous seasons mm -hmm. of letting go of who they once were yeah and giving the opportunity for them to evolve because in if they're in your mind they're not they're not growing anymore yeah and this is why i mean by godly accountability having people around you who hold you to the standard of christ yeah i do believe that when we come to the end of our life i don't think the measurement is going to be how many souls did you win i don't think the measurement's going to be how many followers did you have what's going to happen is there's going to be a ruler and the ruler is going to be in the shape of Jesus. And God is going to measure you up to that rule. That ruler, he's going to measure you up to the shape of Christ. And he's going to see how, how much do you look like that? How much of you looks like that standard? We have to remember we are living for the standard of Christ. Mm -hmm. And I'm very big on the idea of the fact that not only are we meant to be ones who speak the gospel, can you be a voice of the gospel in the rooms that there's no cameras? Can you live for the audience of one? 
What's your Jesus. private ministry saying? Jesus. Because if you can only, like, let's say, for example, right now with the podcast, um, I'm grateful to be on the platform. Thank you for trusting me to be here. But I have my own private conversations with you. Yep. I have my own private conversations with you. Yep. It has nothing to do with the podcast. Yep. Um, it's and Haley just, has... Haley has been a friend in some dark hours, like dark, dark hours, dark, and has held me accountable, not in condemning, not in a condemning way. She has held me accountable to the standard of God's word and encouraged me to stand on the standard of God's word. Because there are, there, there is a lot of times where you could have been like, Hey man, at this point, say what you got to say, <laughs> do what you got to do, because this is crazy. But no, every time you were like, I'm reminding you, God loves you. Yeah. Stay focused. Don't quit. Stay in his presence. Listen, when I met you, oh gosh, <laughs> we can go there. When I met you, um, met you in London, obviously you're running your other podcast at mm -hmm. the time. Um, and I gave you a word. Yeah. And I remember literally leaving there and I heard God say, it's her, you're for. I remember hearing God say, mm, that's who mm, you're mm. connected to. And you weren't even supposed to be there. No, I wasn't meant to be there at all. <laughs> God you didn't even want to be there. I didn't want to be there. It was cold. <laughs> it was a cold day. It was like the coldest day in London, 2022. <laughs> um, and I remember literally, it was, I, lived two, I lived about two hours and a half away from where we met. Yeah. Um, and my husband was filming at the time because um, he was doing marketing for the podcast that um, recording that mm -hmm. you guys did. And he said, do you want to come to this podcast recording? I came and said, no, I'm going to go in my bed. I literally roll over to scroll and I hear God say, you better get up, shower. You have 20 minutes. God literally said, you have 20 minutes. You got to go. You have to be there. I literally end up being there. I remember you guys were filming in the jet. The jet wasn't ready yet. We were waiting for like 30 minutes. Yeah. I'm cold. I was angry. <laughs> I'm like, God, you told me to come here. You said I need to be here. It's cold. I'm why shivering. am I here? Right? Why, am I why, here? Am I here? why am I here? <laughs> so at this point, I'm fighting God. Whilst I'm fighting God, obviously the the the, the thing is coming out of my mouth, the, the what do you call it? The breeze, because yeah. you can see it now. And people are probably looking at me thinking, this girl's crazy. Why is she <laughs> arguing with God? And I remember getting on there, meeting you for the first time. And literally as I'm meeting you, I just hear God come and say, she, you have a word for her. I'm like, I don't know who she is. <laughs> I don't know who she is. I don't think God is like, literally. And God is literally downloading mm, mm, everything. Mm. And I'm just like, there's something on this woman's life. Mm. And then obviously we get into the car, we start praying and you know, God spoke and it was like, I need to have a relationship with this woman. Wow. And since then we've, we've yeah. kept in touch. We spoke and last time when I was in Atlanta, we spoke, we prayed together. Mm. Um, and it's like every single time I'm coming here, God always reminds me, Hey, make sure you go there and encourage your sister in Christ. Because what you're doing right now isn't just, you know, it's not, it's ministry. Yeah. And I said this to you when mm -hmm. I met you, I said, you're, you're ministry on you you have a strong ministry on you and the ministry that people think ministry is they think it's always just about starting the church yeah. and having the praise yeah, and the worship yeah. no ministry is allowing people to see the face of god yeah it's allowing people to see the 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 relatability of god or yeah. as you say in totality, totality yeah that's the what wholeness of god yeah the total the, all the faces of god yeah. all the aspects of god all the facets of god um and i remember um when I messaged you last year and I was like, God's raising up your own name. Mm. And I was like, God's got your, your name. Mm. That's the mm -hmm. first thing that God showed me when I first met you. Wow. You have your own name. Wow. And I said that I was like, Megan, you, <laughs> there is something that God has for you. And I'm so grateful to God that he's preserved you. Yeah. I'm so grateful to God yeah. that he preserved you because a lot of people would have left God they would have left the call. They would have left. They would have just left. Um, and there would be moments when I'm praying for you back in London. And I'm just hearing God say, pray for Megan. I'm just minding my business. <laughs> I'm here praying. I'm like, okay, God, like what am I praying for today? He's like, pray for Megan. And then sometimes I'd randomly message you. I'd be like, sister, I'm praying for you. Yeah. I'll just drop you a sermon. All the I'd time like, you do. I'd be like, All the si yeah. sister, I'm praying for you. Watch yeah. your sermon. This is a lane of my heart. This and is. every time you did, you can go back to our messages. When you were, when you would text me or, or, or message me and say, I'm praying, it was literally in moments where I was like, I mean, hurting. And I would see a message from you, praying for you. Like, and it would, you know, 
it was just those reminders that God loves me, that he would put somebody, put me on somebody's mind and heart hundreds of thousand miles away. You know what I mean? And the kindness that I experienced when God used the right people, the way that I was able to experience his love. You know what I mean? I've always had people in my life, but it wasn't until God sent the right people who knew him. Do you know what I mean? And there's a difference. That's it's so different than having, it's one thing to have friends and you need friends. I'm not saying like you, you need people. Yes, you do. God doesn't want us to be alone. You need people, but there's something different you experience when you have friends that know him, not just that believe mm. in him, but that know him. Cause you have to reflect him. Yeah. Like, as I said, I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. But the reality is there's going to come a time because I believe that judgment is a real thing. Mm -hmm. The judgment of the Lord is a real thing. When you get to the end of life, I believe that God will probably show you all the people you encountered in your life. Mm. And God will ask you, how much of me did you show them? <sighs> how much of me did you show them? How much of my love did you show them? How much of my mercy did you show them? How much of me did you show them? And for me, that is the most important thing. The most important thing is when I get to the end of my life and people write the eulogies, I don't want it to be a thing where people come and say, Haley is great. Mm -hmm. I want people to come and be like, I know God is great because of the love yeah. Haley showed me. Yeah. Because that's what it's really about, right? Yeah. It's about being a living example of God's love. Yeah. And with the type of work that I do, being a speaker, the reason why I speak is because there's so much life in the tongue. Mm -hmm. I always come and say, God, may my words be there to edify and not to quench what God is doing in somebody's life. I have people who have businesses now, even at seven figures, they came to me at the beginning of their business mm. and they came and said, Haley, I want to do this. I want to do that. And I came and said, go, go forth and do it. You're mm. going to prosper. You're going to do great. Now they can come back years later and be like, Haley, you're one of the, f you're one of the, the few voices that came and spoke life mm. into what I was doing. And it's not to give credit to me, it's to give credit in what the word says. Yeah. The word says, speak life. Yeah. This is what Proverbs teaches us to do. Yeah. How are your words edifying? So I always say speaking is spiritual. What I do is spiritual. Yeah. People may say, okay, cool, because I have a business and I get paid lots of money to do it. It's because I understand there's a spiritual ramification that when you speak life into something, yeah. it will blossom and become what it is. Yeah. I would not be where I am today if I didn't have certain words spoken over me when I was 16, <laughs> when I was 17, when I was yeah. 18. The person that speaks most life to me into me right now is my husband. Mm. There's there's the voices that nobody will ever see, especially us that have platforms yeah. or following or whatever. You you it's the voices yeah. that no one will ever see, yeah. ever hear about. Yeah. It was Mordecai's voice yes. that allowed Esther yep. to rise. Yep. God used Mordecai yeah. to speak life into Esther. Yeah. We all need a Mordecai. Yeah. We all need that voice that is going to keep us yeah. and remind us, hey, God holds you to a higher standard. Yeah. Hey, keep going down the path. Yeah. Hey, God loves you. Hey, are you in your word? Yeah. Hey, when did you last pray? Yeah. Hey, when did you last fast? Yeah. Hey, where are you in repentance? The Bible says when you stumble, as it says Galatians chapter 6 verse 1, Give them a nudge. Yeah. Just be like, hey, sis, I know that things are hard right now, but God's got you. Let's go. Let's go. That's, we all need it. Yeah. Like, it's especially the world that we live in right now, how dark it's getting, you need to know who your tribe is. God literally came to me in 2024. God said, tighten the ship. Because mm. I know things are about to get rough. Mm. I felt mm -mm. like God said, tighten, your sh tighten the ship and tighten your discernment. Mm. Bring mm -mm. in those who are meant to be close, close, and keep those who are meant to be far, far. Mm. It was very, mm -mm. it's a very strong word. And wow. I feel that for you as well. Yeah. Tighten the ship. Yeah. It's very much bringing those who are close, bring yep. them in close, allow them to be the few voices that are kind of da -da -da speaking mm -hmm. to the life and da -da. those who are far. Hi, thank you. Bye. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your opinion. Cool. Yep. Okay. God bless. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. I love you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love you over there. Over there. And it's okay. It's okay to love people over there because when, when God is doing something, you have to be so strict with the voices yeah. that are speaking into, into it your, yeah. because it's God. And being mindful of who you're allowing oh, yeah. access into what God has given you. Yes, discernment. This is why yeah. discernment, discernment is everything. I, I'm I'm scared of people who don't have discernment. <laughs> I'm so scared of you. Why don't you have discernment? <laughs> I'm so scared. How do you live your life? Like, how do you like, how can you just be there trusting anybody, everybody? Oh, everybody, everybody look at what I'm doing. Blah, yeah. blah, blah. I, I'm scared. Yeah. I'm so scared. And, and, and I'll tell you this, uh, God 
was helping me because I've lost, especially within the last three years. So mm -hmm. from 20, maybe 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, I've lost so much trust in myself mm. um, because I've gone astray in so many ways um, and have thought that this was the right thing to do and then it ended up being bad or, you know, just mis mistakes, not having a close intimate relationship with God so I'm not submitting everything to him. Mm. Um, and... It, after 2023 and going through everything last year, I lost so much trust in myself wow. and I lost so much trust in the gift that I know that God had given me of discernment mm. because um, I'm naturally like in my flesh, I'm naturally just a, you know, negative. I can think negative and be pessimistic. Um, and God is just really helping me with my trust in the gift of my discernment. And the, mm -hmm. and the point that changed that for me was submitting it to him. Come on. Because he will tell me, okay, Megan, that's you. That's your flesh. So that's good. not me. So good. Or he will tell me by his word, so good. by confirming in his word, that's me. So good. That's me. That wasn't, that's not you being pessimistic. So good. That's that was that was a discern that's but you were being led by the spirit. So good. And just in and trusting in that again. So good. Because like you said, we need, we're gonna need it. We're going because to Because the, the level of deception that and, and Norris Johnson was on my podcast and right. he talked about this. That's yeah. a, a a blanket deception that is gonna be in twenty twenty four. Um we're gonna need discernment. And so, so for much. everybody that says that they have a relationship with Christ. You better be praying, praying pray for wisdom praying. and discernment Ooh. so that, you know, I mean, so and my mom used to say this. She said, Megan, there's going to come a point in time where we have to be so closely, closely knit to the to the voice of God mm. that if he says to turn left or right, you do you it immediately. Right. That level. Right. And that's what I'm praying for. I'm saying, God, I want to be so close to you. Right. That even if it's don't go to that grocery store, Come on I don't now. go. Come on now. If Come it's don't now. even, if it's wait five minutes before you leave, I wait. Come Whatever on. you say, because the we have to, we're going to have, there's going to be a knowing that we're going to have to have a level of discernment that we're going to need to be able to navigate through this year. Listen. And and it's going to be a clear a clear difference mm. for those who are following God mm. and those who are not. This is so good. And, you know, just the, the scripture that I think about is when Jacob came and said, surely God was in this place and I did not know. I don't want to ever be in a place where, where God, God is and I don't know. Lord, have I'm mercy. so insensitive to his voice, to his move, to his spirit when he's lifted off something. And it's also like what you said, you can have, you can be so, you know, one of the things that God came and said to me, um, recently was don't make don't make the god you encountered in your previous season your god because some of us are still trying to idolize the previous encounter that we had with god mm -hmm. if god was speaking to you in a previous season through dreams mm -hmm. you used to like to believe that god still speaks to you through dreams oh, and only will speak to you um, in dreams right yeah but god speaks every single day the yeah. first type of exposure we had of god is god is the creator yeah which means that god can create a new way of encountering yeah you, him yeah every single day yeah. different days when you encounter yeah. and i find that you can be so caught up on the path that you're in so even like an, a, a great example is speaking i've been doing speaking i was like speaking 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 and last year god said um i want you to get into music management i said <laughs> me <laughs> i'm like god no way i'm like i'm good doing mm -hmm. speaking i'm good and stuff like that um and there's an artist now that i manage called anatoria and she's killing it in the uk Love like her big gospel artist here in the uk um in the uk um, and I remember even when I had the conversation with her, she had been praying the mm. same time that God had been speaking to me and God had been speaking to me about her for 10 months before I approached, before she approached me, because God said she will approach me first. And she spoke to me and how did she, the conversation she reached out to me on was, Haley, I keep getting speaking engagements. I need you to help me with speaking. Mm. And I said, that's so interesting. Mm. We end up having a conversation and boom, bada bam, ended up managing her. And since working with her, it's just been so interesting to see everything I know about speaking, everything I know about business, everything mm -hmm. I know about faith. We pray together all the time. We have a lot of conversations, Bible studies. It's like, even though, yes, we are building something in terms of Anatoria and her business mm -hmm. and her, her music her brand career, yeah. her brand, 
it's very still much rooted yeah. in the word yeah. and all our other skills and our other experiences are still coming together. Yeah. And it's just like, wow, when God said to me in 2022, oh, you're going to do music for a while and you're going to do this, you're going to do that. Now I think 2024, wow, God, it makes sense why you told me to do all these things. Yeah. And it just reminds me about David. David at one point was a musician. We yeah. remember that he actually was a musician for Saul, for King Saul. Yeah. He came, King Saul was being disturbed by mm -hmm. demons. Yep. And they came and said, we yeah. need a minstrel. Mm -hmm. David showed up. David was a shepherd. David was a warrior. David was the son of Jesse. Yeah. In every single season, the Holy Spirit allowed David to walk in different things. Yeah. And now when it comes to him being a king of Israel, he needed that minstrel voice. Yeah. He needed that, you know, shepherd anointing. Yeah. He needed that leadership. Mm -hmm. He also needed to be a son of Jesse. Yeah. Everything we go through, if you are not listening attentive to the voice of God in every season, that's why the Bible says, don't despise humble beginnings. Yeah. Because in the beginning, that is when you will hear the Lord. Yeah. That is when God will speak to you with the vision. So for me, in terms of my career, now 10 years down the line, I think the only thing I regret is even though, yes, I came to Christ at the age of 18, I wish I had Christ at 16. Mm -hmm. I wish I had Christ yeah. when I first started. Yeah. I'm grateful now that I'm on the journey where yeah. God is in all my businesses. Yeah. God is at the center of it. But I just think to myself, wow, what could I really tapped into yeah. if I had that right at the beginning of beginning. my career? Yeah. So most people, when they come to me, every single speaker, they come to me, they're like, Haley, I want to speak now. I want to get to corporations. I want to get paid. I want to do this. They're always saying to me, what is it? And I always reply back to them, give your life to Christ. Mm. I've had speakers look <laughs> at me and think, crazy. what? They're like, what? No, Haley, you're meant to show me about the invoices, duh, how to network, how to get I'm like, give you your said, life to Christ. Give your life to Jesus first. Give your life to Christ. And the beautiful thing is some of them actually took that advice wow. and they came to Christ. Wow. And now they're thriving in their speaking careers. Wow. Because there's no way that you can come and say you want to speak life into people and you don't have the voice of God. Mm -mm. Your, your tongue is a vessel. Mm -mm. Even for you to be married by law, you have to speak. You have to say your vows. <laughs> yeah. The Bible comes says, believe in my heart and confess with your tongue mm -hmm. that Jesus is Lord. In order for you to become a Christian, you need to, to speak. speak. Yep. So there's no way you can come and say, I want to be a vessel and have a voice, yeah. but you're not willing to submit to submit. the voice of God. Ooh, we. Everyone wants to speak, but do you want to be a voice? Yeah. And how you become a voice is listening to the voice. Wow. That is that is the secret to yeah. everything I do. Yeah. It's God, what are you saying today? Yeah. The Bible says his mercies are renewed every, every day. morning. Mm -mm -mm. So I'm like, God, what are you saying today? Yeah. Not yesterday's voice, not yesterday's yeah. manner. Today's today. manner. God, what is the word today? God, where am I meant to be today? And that's how I ended up in Atlanta. It was today. I was literally one to have a one conversation. <laughs> and then I was like, I need to be in America. It, this was not in the budget. This was not in anything. And I was like, I need to be here. And even when I was on the way to, I literally was three minutes, about five minutes away from missing my check-in time. So I'm running through the airport, Heathrow Airport, and I'm running and I go and I quickly check in my bags. And they'll even come say, quickly, quickly, you're, they're gonna, you're gonna um, lose the check-in time to do the baggage drop. And I'm running to the security. And I remember they even literally said on my, on my, um, uh, my boarding pass, um, when you get to the gate, they need to do extra security for you. And I'm traveling with my husband mm -hmm. and I'm the only person that's getting called for security. <sighs> and I'm here getting tapped again for a TSA and stuff. <laughs> And I've been thinking, what the hell is happening, God? I'm like, God, maybe I'm not meant to be in the USA. Mm. Like, what is this happening? Da, 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 da. And I remember when I'm getting onto the plane now, they're like, yep, yeah, this is where your seat is. And I'm like, this is business class. I never bought a business class ticket. Mm. I never bought a business class ticket. And then God says, I'm about to upgrade your whole travel. Ooh, we. I'm like, just because you're obedient to me for yeah. telling you to go to Atlanta, yeah. all your plans are about to shift here. And literally, as I landed, literally, I called you the next morning. I'm like, yeah, I'm going around. You're like, oh, come on to the podcast. Da, da, da. Yeah. And I literally have just seen God do this every single time I travel. One of my prayers is God, mash up my schedule. Yeah. Take it over. Happened when I went to yeah. Dubai. Happened last year when I was in different countries. When I was in America last year as well. Every single time I travel, I said, God, have my schedule. And then I find myself in rooms, conversations I did not plan for, but God did. Because I was just obedient. Obedience. Just obedient. That 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 has to be the word for oh, yeah. this year. And forever. Every day, every, every, day, day, every day, every day, every minute, year, every day. But <laughs> but tighten tighten up on your obedience and be quickly to do it. Don't quick, wait. Quick, quick. Quick. And don't halfway do it. 
do it fully and so good and being close to God mm. and submitting everything, every, you know, the, those feelings, there's nothing wrong with being mindful of your body and listening to your body. Cause that's something that, you know, listen to your body and, you know, if it doesn't feel right, you know, listen to your body. And, that, and there's nothing wrong with any of those things. Right. There's nothing wrong with boundaries. There's nothing right. wrong with any of those things. But are you submitting it to God? Yeah. So I'm good. feeling this, Lord. Mm. What is it? So good. You tell me what it is. And I just think so that this year, um, if I can encourage anybody, and I'm sure Haley would encourage everyone the same way, is to be obedient yes. and surrender so your life good. to oh. him. Because oh. he knows you intimately Ooh. and he knows the days of head of you. Ooh. He knows them intimately, not just like he has a kind of uh, overall view of what, no, he knows your days intimately because he loves you intensely. And so if I can encourage anybody, I don't know where you are and where you are spiritually and where you are in your life, but I'm telling you, just say yes. Confess it out of your mouth Amen. right now, wherever you are. Come you can be in the car. You could be at work. You could be in the salon. You can be at home with your children. I don't care where you are. Take five seconds, pause, and say, God, I give it all to you. Mm -hmm. I will live for you as you show me how. I'll commit myself to your word. And this year, I've tried everything else. I've tried drugs. I've tried the, the, the relationship. I've tried going to the clubs. I've tried just going to the gym. I've tried the new age. I've tried crystals and rocks and sage and, and meditating. You've tried everything, and yet you still feel that void. Take five seconds right now and confess, Lord, you can have it. And I give you my life. Mm. And watch. As you stay committed, watch. Maybe the outer world won't change overnight because it won't. Mm. But you are going to feel something mm. inside of you that you have never experienced. It's going, you're going, I'm telling you, it's going to happen. It's just like when you lose weight, you lose a few pounds, nobody sees it, but you know, because mm. you stepped on that scale mm. and you've seen what has fallen off. You've seen the number go down. And that's the same way. It's the same thing that happens spiritually. So I'm just going to encourage you as we end this episode, which was amazing. Take, take a minute and just say, God, I give it all to you. And watch how he changes everything. Everything. And don't get discouraged. Because the second you do that, the enemy is going to be after you hard. But know that that's, God's not shocked by that. He's not surprised by that. And he has you. You give everything to him, he has you, and you have nothing to worry about. So, Haley, thank you. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you for you. coming. Of course. Thank you. Um, this was God all day. Oh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. And when we have, Haley and I are going to connect more and do more, I believe, in this year and yes. years to come. And, and I believe London it. is about to you. I can't wait to listen. If you are, I need you guys in to the comment, comments yes. right now. If you are in the UK, yes, come on, comment right now because I'm coming to the. I'm coming to London. Yeah, I'm bringing you to London. She's we bringing need, me to London. Yeah, 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 yeah. In this, I don't know when, but we're gonna announce it sometime. But I'm coming. So I need to know if you guys are there and and y'all. Want to yeah. do something? Come on. Let's let's do it. Let's, do, let's it. do it. So put it in the comments. Make sure you follow Haley on all of her. We'll have all of her stuff in the description. Make sure you follow her and support her. She's out here in the world, in the in the corporate world, professing God's name and proclaiming Him and living by Him and leading people to Him. So we want to support her in that. Um, and make sure you follow me on all all platforms. Make sure you're listening audibly to the podcast, please. That helps so much when you listen to it audibly on all streaming platforms. My Patreon community, the Village community, I love you guys so much. All exclusive content. There's going to be an exclusive clip of Haley on Patreon. So make sure you guys head over there, join the Patreon community, the Village community. All bonus content is on there. Um, we're doing discipleships, Bible studies. We're doing uh, live Zooms. We're doing uh, all sorts of things. My In Totality docu-series is on there. So much good stuff, and the community is just amazing. So please head over there. Um, and I love you guys, and I'll see you next week. <laughs>